The cleanup of the now defunct Fukushima nuclear plant in Japan is proving to be an extremely delicate and complicated operation. But now a team from Bristol University may have come up with a tool that can help. A lightweight flying drone that can detect radiation without putting people at risk. For the second in our series of reports on the march of the machines, Paul Mason has been to see the prototype in action. The propellers were bought from hobby stores. The technology on board was not. These drones, designed and built at Bristol University, are carrying precise radiation sensors and onboard thermal cameras. And if the control devices look a bit incongruous, the mission is all too serious. This British technology is currently moving from prototype to commercial use, and it could soon be working for real inside Fukushima. And Fukushima, the Japanese nuclear plant that suffered multiple meltdowns and radioactive leaks in 2011, needs all the help it can get. Since the disaster, managers have struggled to map the radiation safely. Robots and static monitors are of limited use. Helicopters and people on the ground risk exposure. The Bristol team, whose work is being sponsored by Sellafield, think they can help. At the moment with uh, big helicopters you can get ground stations and you can say that yes you've got big large areas you can't actually say specifically where it is. So with our lightweight detectors we've designed them so that they can actually tell you where the uh, radiation is down to sort of the meter scale. I think what we want to do today is... The Bristol the team are still tinkering with the drones which they hope to take out to Fukushima next year. The kit on board can stream back radiation data in real time. And because they fly low, they can measure the radiation in greater detail. But measuring radiation is just one of Fukushima's problems. There's been a catalogue of radiation leaks, mistakes in the decommissioning, and a marked lack of transparency or decisiveness by the bosses of TEPCO, which owns the plant. Enter another British contribution to the Fukushima operation in the form of the nuclear industry veteran, Barbara Lady Judge. When I arrived there and when the Nuclear Reform Monitoring Committee started, we didn't find a real safety culture at all. We found an efficiency culture. The idea was to generate as much power as possible. There wasn't an issue about whether it was done with safety procedures or not. It was efficiency. Nearly half of all Japanese people surveyed say they want the nuclear industry closed for good. In a habitually opaque business culture, there's been a loss of trust. Lady Judge's project is to get as many plants as possible reopened to new standards. What makes you right and them wrong? I don't think I am right and I don't think they're wrong. I think it's about education. I think what's happened in the past is that the nuclear industry has closed all around the world, not just in Japan, closed its arms and said, we can't talk about this. Whereas the people that are against nuclear are very vocal. So the population here is one side, and the industry has done itself no favors by not talking to them, totally none. So as Japan reaches out in the wake of Fukushima, British expertise has been proffered. What it can achieve in the face of public sentiment is not so clear.